Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name's Noelle and I do unboxings here, mostly lifestyle subscription boxes, but also some stationery, books, beauty, jewelry, and even a dash of Disney. So if you like unboxings, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell. And as always, if you are already subscribed, thanks again so much for being here and welcome back. Today I have a familiar book subscription here on the channel to share with you and it is a Once Upon a Book Club. They have both an adult and a young adult subscription. I have always done the adult subscription so it comes in this pink box instead of the green box that's assigned to the young adult one. I've definitely done some of their special boxes. I did their 2019 advent box which was really fun as well but I will be taking a break from this subscription. I have the December box to read and I will definitely share it with you here on the channel but I have gone ahead and skipped my renewal for January just because I don't want to let my to be read pile get too crazy but also I'm waiting to hear back from Once Upon a Book Club about what they're going to do in terms of their VIP club. So that said this subscription is $34.99 per month plus $10 in shipping and there's always a surprise novel everyone gets the same one but they do release hints ahead of time so you can decide if it sounds like a book that you're going to want to read and what's really cool about this particular subscription is they actually create gifts that go along along with the book. So as you're reading along, you'll get to a page and it will have a little sticky note that will tell you to open the corresponding gift. And often they actually have the items made so they're supposed to feel like they're coming from the pages of the novel. Sometimes I think it's with greater success than other times. Sometimes I feel like it's a little bit chintzy or a little bit cheesy and I don't really like when they have like branding or the actual page numbers on the items. And then every once in a while they totally surprise me and there's a fantastic item that I think is a great time into the novel. Um, I thought this particular box was pretty good but again I'm just going to take a little break on it because a lot of the times the items aren't necessarily re-giftable and that's one of the like main like detractors for me. But I will be going through and showing you all of the gifts that I received and kind of reading a little excerpt as we go along. If you guys are interested though in subscribing to Once Upon a Book Club, I have a couple of ways for you to save some money. You can use my link, which I'll leave for you in the description box below, and that will save you $5. Or you can save 10% using, I believe my VIP uh, code is still working, and that's Maui Noel 10 But like I said, I'm hoping that they kind of revamp their VIP uh, membership. I've never actually received a, a free box to review even though I've gotten them a lot of referrals and I'm hoping that that will be one of the changes where it's sort of linked to the number of referrals you get to maybe have the opportunity to review a free book box just because as you guys know I open a lot of books here on the channel. I open a lot of boxes here on the channel and I just have to kind of watch my budget in terms of making sure that I'm showing you guys new and exciting things all the time. So let's go ahead and get into it. I do think the box itself is always really cute cute. Um, so there's usually like two or three like what I consider like real gifts. Sometimes there's what I call paper gifts which might be like you know a letter that was in the book and I, I don't never really feel like those should count as the actual gifts because they're not tangible. They're not things you can re-gift. They're not things that you can actually like use in your daily life. I feel like they've gotten enough feedback that they're slowly starting to move away from that but one of the paper gifts that I do always actually appreciate is they always do a little quote card which I think is kind of a nice idea if you have one of those little like stands you can kind of have that out so that you can kind of have it in the background when you're reading and the quote for this particular novel was but now the time for dreaming and wishing was over and she was going so it's really a story about two um, unlikely friends and a very powerful female friendship and it comes from the book Miss Benson's Beetle by Rachel Joyce and I actually I wasn't sure if I would like this it didn't sound like the kind of book that I would pick up for myself but it was really really sweet the hint was kind of like Thelma and Louise in terms of these two women going on an adventure and really uh, learning a lot about themselves by kind of recognizing how different they are from that other person I felt like sometimes it was a little bit like 
not didactic, but I felt like sometimes they were just really like, tr the author was really trying to drive the point of the novel home and like there were these like little epiphany moments that I didn't feel like had to be spelled out quite so blatantly. But overall, I did find it to be a really like fun, cute book. I thought it was fun. I thought it had a good message about really finding your vocation and again, like the importance of having strong female friendships. So I have really enjoyed the fact that lately in the book boxes, they have included a letter from the author which I think is a really nice touch and we have a, a nice little letter from uh, Rachel Joyce and I won't read the whole thing to you but I'll read a couple of paragraphs so you get an idea. It says, Dear reader, a number of people have asked why I chose to write a book with a beetle in it. It turns out that people like butterflies but tend to be more squeamish about insects without those large elegant wings. The truth is that Miss Benson's Beetle is mainly a story about two women and the extraordinary journey they go on together both across the world and into themselves but my passion for beetles began when I was a child she goes on to talk a little bit more about the inspiration and what's really fun is in the end of the book she uh, pretends that she was able to um interview both of the main characters which I thought was kind of fun. It was kind of silly because it, it felt a little less natural than the rest of the book in terms of the dialogue but it was kind of a fun little uh, like added thing. It was like a fun like credit roll or something and then she also talked about uh, in another section at the end of the book the inspiration of this novel and it kind of had like a like a paranormal like ghosty like origin which I thought was kind of interesting and I d I'm glad I like didn't read that until after getting through the book but this uh, photograph that she has is the inspiration for the gals that were in the novel which I thought was kind of cool. So it says this year has been one of the most challenging of my life. What has sustained me are my friendships. What has also sustained me is the knowledge that somehow I had the foresight not to write a quiet book but instead a wild searching up and down adventure story about two glorious women and an island on the other side of the world which is New Caledonia. This is why I'm so proud and thrilled to be a part of the Once Upon a Book Club. It reminds us that even in a time of isolation, there's still the possibility for connection. I hope you enjoy Miss Benson's Beetle. I hope you en you find Marjorie and Enid's gumption inspires you. I hope you never feel the need to run away from a stag beetle. And even though it's hard for us to travel right now and experience the wonder of the world, we can do it with books and the imagination. We can still keep trying to understand what we don't know. In a closed in world, that seems more important than ever before. With my best wishes, Rachel Joy. So like I said, I've really enjoyed having these authors like chime in and be like kind of connect the uh, the book to like current events and everything that we've been going through and how it's going to like sort of meet us where we're at. So loved that. They also always have a bookmark, but this one actually had an extra like special bookmark. So it said Incredible Creatures, the Golden Beetle of New Caledonia. And like I'm totally one of those people who is not like a big fan of like the insect house at the zoo, especially not like spiders. But but beetles can be really beautiful and so I was happy they were searching for a beautiful golden beetle. I like had this like hope that we were gonna get some like cool like beetle jewelry like a ring or a brooch or something which we didn't and I think that's also one of the things with this uh, book subscription is I keep like as I'm reading I'm like oh that would be a perfect gift for us to receive and then I like unfortunately like kind of set myself up for disappointment and then I'm like so sad at the end when we don't actually get that like uh, I read their Halloween special book box and it was about a candle maker and we never got a candle in the whole box and I was like wait what? Um, anyway they also do like sort of a little pamphlet to go along with it that tells you that there's a conversation with the author so an actual like kind of short interview there's some discussion questions if you actually like to read these boxes as a book club I could see that being really fun if you had some like girlfriends that you got the subscription along with and you all from a distance or even if you happen to be in the same neighborhood but you just can't see each other as much right now if you did like a virtual book club I actually think that would be really fun um, and then there are read-along dates and they have a very active uh, Facebook group which I'm, I'm in and out of but I again I've never really participated in the discussion and I feel like their shipping schedule has just been like really delayed it's not just me being super late on getting to this book uh, so I feel like sometimes those dates shift and I don't totally keep track of it but that's another reason that I'm probably gonna put my subscription on pause just for a couple of months at least so I can kind of catch up and start fresh and hopefully everybody else is gonna catch up with their shipping schedule so 
on the back we just have a picture of some like beetles and stuff which is you know kind of fun but uh so let's go ahead and read through the book so there were only three gifts there were no what i call paper gifts so that was kind of nice i definitely prefer that i'd rather have like three higher quality gifts versus like four gifts but one of them is like a piece of paper so this again is the beautiful book and uh it does have a once upon a book club sticker on it now the first uh the first sticky note let's see maybe i should just read I'll, I'll read the back for you guys so you have a little bit of a better idea than just uh it's a story about two women it says it is 1950 london is still reeling from world war ii and marjorie benson a school teacher and spencer spinster is trying to get through life surviving on scraps one day she reaches her breaking point abandoning her job and small existence to set out on an expedition to the other side of the world in search of her childhood obsession an insect that may or may not exist the golden beetle of new caledonia when she advertises for an assistant to accompany her the woman she ends up with is the last person she had in mind fun loving enid pretty in her tight fitting pink suit and pom-pom sandal seems to attract trouble wherever she goes but together these two british women find themselves drawn into a cross ocean adventure that exceeds all expectations and delivers something neither of them expected to find the transformative power of friendship it's just another thing i was thinking of when i was reading that blurb on the back there is like another like corresponding like parallel storyline because uh even though it is a story about women there is like a there is a main male character that does appear and let me know in the comments below if you guys read this book i felt like that storyline was absolutely like unnecessary like it just didn't necessarily need to be in there that like sense of menace like it was kind of a sad story but it was just like that like um sort of enemy i guess like the bad guy in the book i just didn't like need that in there it would it didn't like harm the book in any way but it just seemed like somehow unnecessary anyway so let's go ahead and get to the first uh sticky note which was on page 57 so not too far in i always like when it's like kind of soon in the in the pages i think this one was just over 300 pages and like the last gift was like pretty much on the last page which was always a little bit hard but that is one of the things that i like about the subscription is that knowing what page numbers are going to have corresponding gifts does kind of inspire you to read a little bit further especially if it's a book that you're like sort of like on the fence about and there were times with this book where, when it first started rolling along where I was kind of like all right like I, I need a gift to keep me going so here we are on page 57 and here is what the little sticky notes look like so it says uh let's see it says, clearly this was a lie. It wasn't fine, though Marjorie could see now that she'd been wrong. It wasn't her suitcase. It was the red valise Enid had been at such pains to hide. Not only that, but she'd been crying. Her eyes were black flowers. So this red valise appears throughout uh, the, the novel. And, you know, in my mind, it's kind of like a train case, like versus like a giant like suitcase. But in the end, like when we find out what's actually in it, it is more like a suitcase. So I was like, well, we can't like get a suitcase in the book box but um I just felt this was like my least favorite gift so let me go ahead and pull it out so this one actually just came like in a like a little bag and it had uh, page 57 printed and inside we did get a little luggage tag which I actually thought was kind of cute in like a very bright orange which I was kind of surprised that it was in like a bright orange I kind of wish it was like gold and had like a golden beetle on it but it does have a quote printed on it it says but now the time for dreaming and wishing was over and she was going so it matches the uh the matches the quote card but I always love having a new you know travel tag not that we get to travel anytime soon but it's good to have these and I just kind of keep a lot of our like uh packing cubes and travel accessories in that trunk behind if you've ever been wondering I know some of you guys are always like painstakingly looking at my background if you've ever wondered what's in that little trunk back there that's what's in there a lot of like uh, travel accessories so we got this little um, polka dotted red case which I was like a little disappointed because nowhere in the book does it say that the valise was red polka dots and even though Enid Pretty is very girly and she wears her pink suit with her pom-poms um, I just didn't feel like her luggage would be red polka dots I mean this works for me because you guys know that I have a love for Disney so it's like very like 
Minnie Mouse, uh, but that's that's what it makes me think of. This looks like a Disney box to me with this item versus like a, a lady who's trying to look fancy and traveling in the 1950s. So it's actually basically a packing cube. It's not like a, you know, it's not a suitcase style. So uh, I love packing cubes though. I swear by them. I feel like I've gotten so many friends to love packing cubes, but it just kind of collapses it does have this like um this band where you could actually put that over like the handle for your for your roll on which is kind of nice and it does have this handle here the back side is just plain black and then the top side this is kind of more of a like waxed canvas almost so it is a little bit more sturdy on top but i do like that it folds in half and then inside it is a little bit like a suitcase where we have these like mesh pockets and then there's actually a zipper pocket here as well so you could definitely do some good um organizing for your travels and this is something that even though I'm not like a super big fan of the red polka dots um, and I don't think that it really fit the book that well this is something that I'll probably use because I do love to have packing cubes just because it's the best way to organize your stuff you can like put all your dirty clothes in one place you can have like you know all your tops in one place it's just it just really keeps your suitcase great especially if you have a lot of stops along the way it's really nice to be able to just like take out you know like day one through five and you'll be able to to like take that out or rearrange it or put it to the bottom of the suitcase. All right, let's keep going and read on to the next one, which was not all the way until a page 197. So here it is. It's uh so they are in New Caledonia and they're kind of one of them has some stuff that happened before they left and so she's kind of trying to keep tabs on what's going back on uh back home in uh in England and so it says one minute, Enid was saying, I've got it, I've got it, I've got a signal. The next moment, she yelped as if the radio had just bitten her. She sat now in silence with it buried in her lap. She said again, do you think the British papers will be here soon? So this was another item that did appear a lot in the book, and I was like, well, they can't send us a radio, but they did send us a radio, which I actually thought was really cute. So it has this, like, they do great packaging for this, but I've said many times before in my unboxings of Once Upon a Book Club, I wish they didn't print the page numbers directly on it because if you were going to re-gift this the box is super cute but it seems very like weird to have a page number on it but inside and this is my favorite gift out of this box you guys because this is actually a pretty cool item we got this really nifty it looks like an old school radio and it's actually a bluetooth speaker so it did come with a charging cable which is great i had a little trouble actually stuffing the charging cable into the front but it's also a radio you guys and I actually went ahead and tried it out with my phone and I was able to use it as a Bluetooth speaker and I was actually able to like search and scan for radio stations which I don't have a radio in my house at all I don't think I would actually use it because I'm always listening to like podcasts or Spotify but this is a great little like desk option for a Bluetooth speaker and I thought it was really cool and like retro so I was super into this I thought this was a great item so um, and it is rechargeable because it has that that cable so that, I was super happy with that and this that was like a gift that sort of made me like rethink pausing I was like oh see sometimes they do a really good job like uh, so I felt like that totally fit with the book and it absolutely was an item that I would use so and then the you know the packing cube I was like I did it wasn't like quite what was in the book but it was still something I would use I just wish it was plain red instead of the polka dots and then on page 333, which was the penultimate page of the main part of the novel, um, not counting those little interviews and stuff that I mentioned, it says, uh, the Freya fetched a magnifying glass. The young woman had a beetle in her hand. Hard to say from a black and white photograph, but it was clearly brightly colored, maybe even gold. Couldn't be a scarab or a carabid. It wasn't round enough. Surely not a soft winged flower beetle. No one had ever found one of those. No wonder the woman looked so happy. Freya moved her magnifying glass to the assistant. She was much older, too old really to be in the field. Tall, big boned, but frail, dressed in a man's jacket and loose trousers. So I won't read the whole description there, but let's go ahead and look. So I just finished this book, you guys, and like hopped on to film this. So again, a cute box. This is actually a hard box. And again, it's an example of a box I would love to keep or maybe even re-gift, but it's just kind of like strange to have page 333 printed on it. But it's so cute with the little like golden beetles so inside probably won't surprise you what this item is uh it is a 
magnifying glass, but it's actually a really nice one. I thought this was really pretty. It definitely like kind of fits the, I felt like the time period. It's got this like faux wooden handle here. Um, actually mine, I'm not sure if that's a, a crack. I hope it's not a crack. Um, I think it's probably just a little scratch, but I thought it was nice that they had it set here in the foam. So it looks, it looks kind of like, you know, fancy. And then we've got this nice magnifying glass, which does actually work. So I can look at those pictures of beetles that they had on the pamphlet and see how big they look and if they scare me which they don't let me know what you guys thought about this if you read the book definitely comment below I'd love to hear from you if you like this subscription and want to see more of it let me know that as well if you appreciated this video you guys please do give it a thumbs up and hopefully I see you very very soon in my next unboxing